Hi, I'm Dustin Weiniger. I was recently asked to do a video comparison between two of the Colt Cap and Ball revolvers, the 1851 Navy and the 1860 Army. So let's go take a close up look at them. Now this will not actually be a shooting video because I already have playlists of videos of these guns being fired so you can see them in action, but I wanted to at least do a tabletop overview of them. Now in some ways you can see that they're actually very similar. They both have the walnut grips, the color case hardened frames, the blued barrel. Now the frame on these guns are actually the same and in some ways even somewhat interchangeable as you'll see in just a moment. Now because the Navy is a 36 caliber and the Army is a 44, the cylinders will be a little different. On the Navy you can see that it's straight, but on the Army it starts out the size of the Navy, but then it steps up to accommodate the larger 44 caliber chambers. And you can see the difference in caliber in this picture here of the muzzles of each one. Again, the Navy being 36 and the Army being 44. Now today, the Navy is also available in 44, but keep in mind that is only available now in modern times. Historically, that was not the case, and it was a 36. Now, the grip on the Army, you might be able to see, is a bit larger, very noticeably larger than on the Navy, and I actually like that. I have somewhat large hands, and to me, this actually seems more comfortable than the Navy size. Now, the barrel is seven and a half inches on the Navy, eight inches on the Army. Also, you can see that the barrel of the Navy is an octagonal shape, whereas it's round on the Army. You might also be able to see here the cutouts in the Navy are somewhat blocky, whereas when they did the 1860 Army, this has much more rounded, contoured edges, and I think the Army is actually somewhat better looking as a revolver. For the sights, they both have the same rear sight in the hammer. The front sight on the Navy is just that little bead, whereas it is a blade sight on the Army, but not very tall, so it does shoot very high. They actually both shoot very, very high. Here's a close-up look at just the frames. And again, these frames are exactly the same, except that the frame of the Army does have just a slight cutout, you should be able to see here, which is there to accommodate that slightly larger cylinder. Also, you can see there is an extra screw put into this one that is not on the Navy. That is actually just for mounting a shoulder stock, which I may or may not ever do in the future. Other than that, the frames are the same. Now, while I've got the guns apart, let's take a look at the cylinders. Again, you can see the difference in caliber. Here's the 36 caliber Navy and the 44 caliber Army. Also, you can see that the cylinder of the Army is just slightly longer than the cylinder of the Navy by about an eighth of an inch. And while the guns apart again, just a close up of the barrels. And again, you can see the Army is half an inch longer than the Navy. The loading procedure on them is virtually the same. You can see they have similar loading levers, but the Navy has this screw hinge in it, and the Army has more of a rack and pinion style. Both work great. On the Army, it does seem to work a little bit smoother, which may be due to that rack and pinion style. Here is sort of an exploded view of both of the revolvers with the 1851 Navy on the top and the 1860 Army on the bottom because I want to talk a little bit about what I meant by interchangeability between these guns. Now if I try to take the 1860 Army cylinder and put it on the 1851 Navy frame, that is not going to work because the frame does not have the cutout. So the cylinder will stop right there. It doesn't allow for that to go all the way down. However, I can take the 1851 Navy cylinder and it will go right onto the frame and the arbor there of the 1860 Army. Then if I take my barrel from the 1851 Navy, it also goes right on. You could just put in the wedge and it would be a functioning 1851 Navy with just a very large grip of the 1860 Army, but that would actually work just fine. Now, as I mentioned, the cylinder is shorter on the Navy than it is on the Army, but to accommodate that, you can see that the forcing cone of the Navy is much longer than it is on the Army to make up the extra space. Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video today and found the information helpful. 
Don't forget to click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos. And look in the description to see where to find me on social media. Thank you so much for watching.